All right, so first we're going to remove the spark plug. You don't have to go this order, but it's easier to do when the engine's still mounted. Then we're gonna re uh, remove the two nuts that hold the uh, air intake on. You can remove the two fuel lines from the carburetor and the two gaskets. Once that's complete, we're gonna remove the side panel where the pull start is. Take that piece off. Then we're gonna remove the handle. Two screws on the side. And then two screws on the bottom. Now we're going to remove the two screws from the muffler. This particular uh, piston and cylinder kit, uh, the piston has two uh, piston rings. Just slide them onto the slots, but just make sure that the openings in the piston rings are the bigger portion is facing up. And there's two pins that I'll show you here in a minute. Now we're gonna remove uh, any wires off the cylinder. There's a clip on this particular model that you have to remove.
Now we're going to remove the old piston. Um, so we just need to take the crank rod pins out, retaining pins. Kind of a pain in the butt. If you turn it a little bit, you can just use something small to, to kind of pry it out. Just use something small to kind of uh, hammer a little bit uh, on that rod pin, uh, but just make sure you're kind of holding it at the same time. That way you're not putting in any uh, crazy pressure. Now we want to take and put um, the crank rod pin, retaining pin, in the one side. Um, the arrow faces towards the exhaust on the top, so we would put it on that right side. That way we could put the rod through the other side. And once it's in there, just give it a little twist, make sure it's fully seated. Little oil, it's good. This is a two, two cycle oil. Nothing crazy, just, you know, give it a little bit of lubrication for the initial start. And on the crank rod pin too. So we're gonna go ahead and put the piston onto the crank rod. And once we get that on there, kind of push the pin in a little bit and make sure it's fully seated. We're gonna put that other retaining pin in. Retaining ring. So in order to compress the piston rings to get it into the cylinder, uh, I saw this example on another video. You just take a end of a cocking tube, uh, cut it, and measure and figure out how much you need to cut off in order so it's not overlapping, um, and you're able to compress those uh, piston rings. And before you put the crank on, or sorry, before you put the cylinder on, rather, um, you want to use something to seal in between the rest of the body of the engine and the cylinder that you're about to put on. Uh, I personally use Permatex. You just got to make sure that you do not get it on anything inside, you know, the crank, crank rod, the piston. Don't let this stuff touch any of that. Uh, it is not a lubricant. Um, it's meant to help seal and prevent, you know, the oil and, and stuff from coming out. So try to be as neat as possible and, you know, you don't have to get crazy with it. Use too much.
So right here, pause the video if you need to, but you can see where the piston rings need to be. Um, there's little pins on this piston. Uh, they don't just go wherever you want them to. Um, and that way when you compress them and put them on there, it's not going to snap the ring. And when you're doing this, just, you know, be patient. It's, like I said, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It probably took me about 10 minutes. Um, but once you feel like you've got it good, you know, give it a little tap, tap, tap while holding the cylinder and pushing it up at the same time. Um, yeah. And then once it goes on there, obviously take out the, the Coggin tube. Um, just try not to pull the cylinder up too far or you're going to have to restart the whole process. So now we're going to hold that cylinder down uh, while we put the four bolts in the bottom again. Try to do it in an alternating uh, pattern, you know, bottom left, top right, top left, bottom right. You know, get them seated and then don't crank them down too much, but obviously they need to be tight. That's the only thing holding the cylinder on the dang chainsaw. Got a new spark plug in installed, you know, make sure it's snug. We're gonna make sure any wires are away from uh, the pulley area. Uh, make sure it's free spinning before you put the whole thing together, you know. It obviously isn't gonna just, sorry, not free spinning, but make sure there's nothing keeping it from spinning all the way, you know, rotate it a few times, make sure it's good to go before you continue installing everything. Make sure you don't forget the clamp for the wires running over top of that. That's uh, installed on the side of the cylinder. Obviously you've got the two bolts that hold the muffler on. Make sure you don't forget the heat shield behind it. Snug it down. Don't get too, too crazy with it though.
So make sure you install the gasket um, in between the carburetor and the intake manifold, the carburetor, and then there's another gasket on top of that. And obviously you have the two fuel lines, one for the primer and one for the main feed. And then you're gonna put the intake, uh, you know, the air cleaner um, housing back on with the two nuts. Snug it, don't get crazy with it. Obviously it needs to be fully, you know, seated. If it's not, there's gonna be, gonna be leaking fuel out the other side but between the engine and the carburetor. And also make sure that you install the throttle linkage uh, to the carburetor as well.